Welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Cassidy and today I'm showing you how to make roasted butternut squash. This recipe is beyond simple. We just need four ingredients and a little bit of prep time. We're going to start by peeling the butternut squash using a potato peeler. I honestly think this is the hardest part of the whole thing because it's a pretty firm skin and you can kind of slam your knuckles if you're not careful. So I recommend actually doing this instead of standing it up like this when you can, oops, you can do this. Hold it firmly at the top and just go down. If you don't have a potato peeler, you can use a knife, but you're likely going to take a lot bigger chunks out of the skin. So I definitely recommend just investing in one of these guys. Careful because it will get a little slippery as you go on. Now that we've got this, it's time to cut it with a very sharp knife. Push those peelings aside. Throw them in your compost or the trash or feed them to your chickens. I wish. I'm actually not sure if you can feed these to chickens. I'm assuming you can. Don't, don't count my word. <laughs> Next up, we are going to cut the ends off. So very firmly hold it. Hope that your knife is sharp. There you go. Cut that end off and cut this end off. I cannot stress enough the importance of a sharp knife when you're cutting a butternut squash and you really want to have a damp cloth underneath your cutting board so that it doesn't slide around. From here, cut it in half or I think it's easier if you cut it this way. And it's a lot safer too. Use some good force, there you go. And from here, we're going to cut this in half so that we get this nice center and cut this in half. Set that aside and we wanna scrape all of this out using a spoon. A grapefruit spoon is awesome here. It makes it a lot easier. That just has like a serrated edge this one's not a grapefruit spoon, so it's not as great, but you should be able to get these out pretty easily for the most part. Just scrape with some force and get out all the goopy bits. Now don't throw these seeds away. You can actually remove the flesh and then you'll have these seeds. And just like pumpkin seeds, you can roast them in the oven for a really yummy snack. These end pieces will be a little weirdly shaped, but we're overall going for about an inch by an inch. And I'm not expecting anyone to whip out their tape measure or ruler and actually measure that, but just go for something that is about this size. I like to use my thumb as a reference because that's roughly an inch. Of course, we all have different sized thumbs, but it works pretty well. Your overall goal for the squash is for most pieces to be pretty much the same size because you want them all to cook about the same rate. And then for this one, it's a lot easier. So we're just going to go ahead and cut, 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 and then cut those in half. Your desired size. Now we toss it in some oil. So transfer that squash to a big bowl. You could do this directly on your baking sheet, but I think this is a much more foolproof way to make sure that your squash actually gets coated in oil. My rule of thumb for squash is one tablespoon of oil per pound of squash. I have about two, three pounds here, so I'm going to go with two tablespoons of oil so that it is really nicely coated which will make it get nice and golden in the oven. I'm using olive oil, but you can use any kind of neutral oil here, like canola oil or vegetable oil. So just drizzle that on. Feel free to do this little ditty, or just use your hands. It's easier this way. And once you have that nice and coated, go ahead and sprinkle on about half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using a coarse salt here. 
and toss it nicely until it's combined. Use your hands if you're so inclined. Of course, make sure they're clean. Next up, take your baking sheet lined with parchment paper and spread them out. By spreading them out, you allow them to brown a little bit and browning is what causes that wonderful butternut squash flavor to really develop. So spread them out as much as you can. It's okay if they're touching a little bit. From here, we're going to put an ample amount of freshly ground black pepper on top. I prefer to do this on the actual tray just because you can really see how much you're coating. Now all we have to do is throw it in the oven. I'm baking this at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of about 30 to 35 minutes. After the 15 minute mark, you'll want to take this out of the oven and stir everything around so that every side of the squash gets nice and golden. And that is how you make roasted butternut squash. It's great in bowls with pasta on its own as a side. I think you're going to love this recipe if you like butternut squash. It has this wonderfully sweet flavor from roasting in the oven. It also has a nice little golden char, especially those edge pieces. They get this really nice brownness. But let's confirm that by taking a bite of this nice little small piece. Oh my goodness, wonderful. If you have butternut squash in a recipe, I always recommend roasting it first because it brings out so much flavor. You can always boil the squash, but it just won't have that same reaction to the heat and the oil. You can find the full instructions and ingredient list on my blog at CozyPeachKitchen.com. I do have that link down below in the description. It has a bunch more tips and flavor combination ideas if you want something a little more than just salt and pepper. Thanks so much, as always, for watching the video. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll make more how-tos and step-by-step -step videos like this if you're interested. Definitely leave a comment down below if you get a chance to try out this recipe. And do hit subscribe because I share new vegetarian recipes every single week.